Hey, welcome to thegolfshoptv.com. I'm Jeff Harrison, my great host. Rich the Coach Gil Gowan. And I'm Amy Anderson. Double A. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today. Uh, Coach, what are we going to talk about today? Well, first of all, uh, are we in Maui today or what? Is this Maui? Uh, here in the desert of Southern California, on a day like today, it's maybe three, four times a year we get clouds like this. And strangely, for us, it's a blessed relief. We, we enjoy days like this because we only get a couple of them a year. So uh, it's fun to be out here with you guys under cloud cover, Jeff. We don't see cloud cover very often out here. This is wild. We're almost forced indoors. It, which doesn't happen very <laughs> often. Well, let's get started. What are we going to talk about today, Amy? Well, we're going to talk about, we're going to actually interview you today, Jeff, so this will be exciting, a new segment we're going to have where we're going to talk to local businessmen and women about the game of golf. Cool. Well, it's always a pleasure to uh, have any conversation with you, Jeff, and you, Amy. Well, let's get started. Thank you. Right to the show. One of the things we like to do on uh, golfshoptv.com is uh, get to know uh, businessmen in our community and around the country and around the world. Uh, golf and business are married. It is a, a very important aspect of the game of golf, its relationship with business, and it's also a, a, a great opportunity for business to get involved in the game of golf. If it wasn't for business, Jeff, we wouldn't have golf. That's exactly right, Coach. Uh, without sponsorships uh, and things of that nature, uh, you know, and without guys that are, and, and gals that are out there working in small business, making enough uh, cash and then they go out and play some golf and it brings more and more people in the game. It's intertwined. Business and golf intertwined in this country. Now Jeff Harrison is with us of course he's the uh, executive producer, director, uh, host of uh, TheGolfShopTV.com. What, what, what does all that mean? I, I, I'm the guy that sets up the lights? Yeah you're the guy that sets the lights up <laughs> and the camera work and uh, but you have a, a, a very unique story Jeff and, and uh, your story has uh, when you talk about golf and business, we're talking exactly about a guy like you who uh, who does uh, has had his foot in both for many years. Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, yeah, I've always I've always loved the game of golf and playing golf for a long time, and I had an opportunity. I think what really kind of opened my eyes and broadened my vision was when I actually stepped away from golf. I was outside golf for about seven years, and. Being outside the game of golf, we realized there was a lot more we could do inside the game of golf to raise a level of, uh, of the game, uh, to attract more people to our business versus just, you know, lowering our prices. So it was, it was quite an eye-opener. Well, it's an amazing resume uh, that Jeff Harrison has. He was the uh, head golf professional at Mission Hills Country Club, one of the finest country clubs in the world, and director of marketing for PGA West, uh, which encompasses uh, uh, the uh, the Nicholas uh, uh, Tournament Course and the Stadium Course, as well as as well as the Arnold Palmer uh, Course, Private Course, the Nicholas Private Course, the Weisskopf Private Course, and the uh, and the Greg Norman Private Course, plus the Citrus Golf Course. Uh, all of them located right here in the Coachella Valley, and those were two big jobs. You know, the, I really thought when I got the job at Mission Hills Country Club, I really thought that was going to kind of be my life job. I mean, it was like, it was like going to work in heaven. You know, the spectacular views, the membership was fabulous, uh, the golf course was always in great shape. We hosted the, the Kraft Nabisco, you know, major for the ladies. I mean, it's like, how much better could you script it? And I discovered there that I really enjoyed teaching, and not so much that every day going into meetings and things like that, not that that's not a good thing, but I realized I love teaching, and that got me back in the opportunity to actually go back into business, mm -hmm. because I really opened my own business at Mission Hills, and then going into, uh, you know, La Quinta uh, and PJ West, it was kind of an interesting thing because that taught me or gave me the opportunity to go out there and say, you know, I remember the first day, my guy, uh, my boss, his name was Mike, and he said, Jeff, he says, you know what, I need you to drive rounds and revenue. And he said, you can do anything you want. He said, but you have no budget. <laughs> Welcome to the working week. I know it don't thrill you. I well, hope it don't kill you. <laughs> Welcome to the working week. Well, you know, I thought, I thought, here's a country club and a facility, they're the largest in the world, nine courses, no other course in the world that large, or in the U.S. that large. And I thought, wait a second, we're doing like 11, 12 million dollars a year, over 100 million dollars a year, and I've got no budget for advertising. Well, 
thank goodness I'd been doing some stuff on the internet and we were able to actually during 08 and 09, the worst economic times, we actually prospered and uh, we grew a lot of our revenue lines during that time and we didn't spend any money, which was really cool. Well, you have to uh, figure out in business, you have to promote, you have to promote, especially in a down economic cycle. And of course, being in the radio business as I am, uh, I think that that's one of the great ways to promote your product, and you've taken advantage of that before in the past as well. I've been very, very fortunate, you know, that we met a long time ago and got to be on your show several times, and it is, it's a powerful, powerful way to do it. You know, the biggest thing, Coach, is to be consistent. Um, and one of the things I was talking with Amy this morning about is we have to be consistent in our message. You know, if every now and then we just give a message out there, it's not often enough because now there's so many places people can be communicated with. And, and if you're just now and then, uh, you're pretty much put on the back shelf. Uh, well, let's talk about that because uh, one, of the one of the most exciting things about this program and about what's going on with you is, is this uh, idea that you have, and I think it's, uh, it, it's very exciting, I know for you, uh, uh, in order to promote every business in this Coachella Valley, and hopefully someday, all around the country and all around the world. And uh, you know, we have the internet now. Yeah. Every company has a website. And many of them are just, uh, it's just like looking at a, uh, at a magazine. Absolutely. I mean, th there's no difference between uh, flipping through a magazine page and flipping through the internet. Absolutely. And you seek to change that on, uh, in the uh, micro and in the macro. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's a, that's an exciting opportunity because, Coach, um, what we're doing is we're taking the internet and really kind of using the value, the value of communication and content um, and taking it to a new level. You know, content marketing is kind of one of those buzzwords, but it's been around a long, long time, and all it really means is, hey, every, every business, every individual has something they can share with their, their database, their customers, that will enhance their lives. And it doesn't always have to be, hey, buy me, buy me, buy me, right. but it has to be something of value. And because the, the people on the internet, they own that space, we can no longer just bombard them uh, because they'll shut us off. Right. You know, we've opted out of things. So what I, my goal is to do this is to go to every golf course, every business and say, hey, you have a story. Every week, let's create an event. And, you know, whether it's a tip from your golf pro, how to play a particular hole, what's going on in the dining room, um, you know, golf equipment reviews. And that goes out to your database that you own. Well, it's an amazing idea. And how can a smart intelligent businessman amp up his internet presentation how can they do that is there a number they can call <laughs> yeah, the or a website they can go to to see what sure. you're doing they can actually go to swingpointmedia.tv and that's that's as simple as get swingpointmedia.tv and you can see an example of what we've done. We basically put some of our product on there and shows the, the product reviews. We also do uh, what I call, it's called Fairway Executive. And really all that is, is that's a weekly show that I do. And it's, uh, it's about business ideas. And that's my, my content marketing, if you will. No selling on there. It's say, how can you communicate better? How can you do what you just said? Amp up your uh, uh, profile. Profile, yeah. absolutely. So you can go to swingpointmedia.tv and check that out. And they, you know, it shows how to get a hold of us. I'll tell you what, uh, it'll change your business. It'll, it'll change the way people perceive your business and you can fix it and change it on a, a, almost a daily basis. It, it's very exciting and it's a great opportunity. So check out swingpointmedia. Dot, what is it, swingpointmedia TV? Swingpointmedia.tv. Dot TV. Yep. Check them out. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeff. My Thanks pleasure, bro. Thank you. How many of you out there know the difference between a chip and a pitch? That's what we're going to talk about next. Enjoy. Welcome to this week's Golf Video Tip. I'm Jeff Harrison and my partner Amy Anderson, and today we want to talk about that question that comes up, what's the difference between a chip and a pitch? And as you can see, Amy is practicing a chip stroke, and what that is is that's a one lever motion. In other words, she's using her bigger muscles, in this case her shoulder, and she's not cocking her wrist. That way it creates a nice low stroke, meaning the ball's going to come out a little bit lower. As she hits this shot, we'll see the ball tends to roll more than it flies. And that's another characteristic of a chip shot. You can see this ball gets on the ground and rolls a lot like a putt. Now, when we hit a pitch shot, 
there's a big difference. It's like a miniature full swing. So now, as you can see, she's making a swing. There's a wrist cock. She's turning her body to the target. The wrist cock causes an up and down motion, which gets the ball up in the air. So now the ball flies more than it rolls. You can see this is nice and high. And now this ball lands on the ground and just rolls out. And that's a pitch shot. So a pitch shot is in the air more than it's on the ground. And a chip shot is on the ground more than it's in the air. Both are effective, and you can use them around the greens. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Jeff, and my partner Amy, for Golf Video Tip of the Week. Welcome back to the GolfShopTV.com. Amy Anderson is here, double A, with the coach, Rich Gilgallon. Every week we like to take a look at... Uh, What's going on in the world of golf? Amy, what do we have this well, week? Well, it's a great week. Bubba's back. How cool is that? And he, and he calls the, uh, the TPC Louisiana his home tournament. Well, Bubba is a son of the South and uh, is not ashamed of that. And uh, he is very exciting. The Masters champion. He's been on David Letterman. Yep. He's been on Charlie Rose. He hasn't yet been on TheGolfShopTV.com. Yeah. We hope he will pretty soon. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's always tough when you win a major. You get a green jacket, Amy, for two weeks, three weeks. He's been just so pumped up. Now it's time to get back to business. Well, yeah, and this course suits him really well. I mean, he's a long ball hitter. This is an extremely long course, but he is tired. So we'll see what happens. And, you know, it was the PGA Tour that, and the players on the tour immediately after Katrina that really uh, came together and, and uh, made sure that as many as they could played in that tournament to support the rebirth of that city. Right. Now, he won this tournament last year. Remember last year, Webb Simpson, Simpson set up for a putt and the ball moved, and he got into the playoff and lost in the playoff. This year's different, different rules. We know that you have to have rules in golf. That was one rule that absolutely had to change. I believe that you should be penalized if you cause the ball to move. But if the wind causes the ball to move and you had, didn't have anything to do with it, you know, that rule was put in, Amy, when the greens ran at about a two on the step meter. So the only way the ball could possibly move was if you moved it. Now they're shaved down there. They run 13 in some of these tournaments, and you get a big wind. The ball is there on the green, and it moves. It, it's just, to me, a, a weak link in, yeah, in our game. But they've changed the rule. They so finally have changed the rule. If you don't cause the ball to move, right then the ball can be placed back uh, without penalty. Right. Now, the LPGA this week's in Mobile, Alabama. But Down in Mobile! Let's talk about last week. How about Michelle Wee missed a third cut in a row? I don't know. Yes. Ben Better made a comment over the or during the week that she's divided her attention too much between school and the tour, and now she's got to get her act together. Well, Ledbetter says that, so <laughs> nobody blames Ledbetter. With all due respect to David Ledbetter, who's a great teacher. But... If you have an opportunity to get a degree at Stanford University, Amy, that's something you have to do. You have to do that. Michelle Wee is 22 yeah. years old. I've been standing on the first tee at the Kraft Nabisco with her since she was 13. Yep. She's been around for a while, and she's taken a lot of grief for pursuing her education, which in my opinion is nonsense. I hope that she has a, a more game. I think she does. I've seen her play well. Uh, and I really hope she does, but even if she doesn't, she's got in her hand right now something more precious than gold, and that is a Stanford College degree. Whatever happens from here is a good thing for Michelle. I'm proud of the decision she made, so, I mean, I, I am and too, she's going to get her game back. I'm not surprised that David Ledbetter would, would uh, you know, say something like that, protecting himself. I was a little surprised at Annika who said that uh, Michelle Wee shouldn't go to college, she should focus on uh, the LPGA, and I thought that was an absurd statement from the usually eloquent Annika yeah. Sorenstam, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, the greatest, one of the greatest golfers that I have ever seen close up. Right. Now, Coach, senior tours off this week. Last weekend, the, uh, Michael Allen won another tournament. What do you think about the whole long putter and the anchoring against your body? Well, as far as I'm concerned, whatever it takes to get the ball in the hole, is fine with me. Putting is impossible. It's what keeps these golf professionals up at night. They wake up like this. 
be sleeping, they think about the five foot putt, they wake up like that. I don't care if you use a two inch putter, I don't care if the putter is this big, whatever it takes to get the ball in the hole, as far as I'm concerned, is fine by me. I don't think they should change the rules. Uh, I don't think that the putter has to be the shortest club in the bag. I don't care if you anchor the putter to your chin, to your chest, to your belly, or to your head. Whatever it takes to get the ball in the hole is okay with me. Now, Ernie Els is going back to belly putter this week. We'll see how he performs. Jeff and I uh, had a chance to demo the Spider Ghost, or the TaylorMade Spider Ghost belly putter. Pretty impressive product. Well, it's one of the hottest uh, 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 clubs in the country right now. And the reason is, it helps you make putts. Whatever it takes, Amy. <laughs> Whatever it takes, put the ball in the hole. Hi, my name is Jeff What's Harrison, my partner. I'm Amy Anderson. Welcome to Product Review. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about, well, quite frankly, it's a product that's absolutely invading the landscape. Amy, it's a belly putter. Tell us what we're going to look at today. Well, we're going to look at the TaylorMade uh, Ghost Spider Putter. You know, before we get into that, let's talk about, you know, just some basics, because most of us have not ever putted with a anything other than we'll call a standard putter. Are there some things that are different with this putter? Well, yeah. The first thing is you're going to anchor it against your belly. That's called the belly putter. But the thing that's kind of cool about that is it puts you in a consistent position every single time. It really gets your eyes over the ball time and time again. You know, the other thing I notice is when you put that in your navel, it really, hey, that's your bend over point. Mm -hmm. You know, so like you said, it gets you in a consistent position. The thing I like from a golf instructor is you mentioned it feels like you're moving your hands, but I saw your shoulders actually rocking back and forth. And quite frankly, as a golf instructor, that's what I want you to do. Well, yeah, I, you know, and our students that do want to use their hands, they're actually moving their hands, but they're really moving their shoulders. Okay. So from a, from a real quick recap standpoint, club goes in your navel. Mm -hmm. You can take a, a left hand low, whatever you're Correct. Right, Tried both. And then just back and forth. Back and through, yeah. So really, that's about it. It's a pretty simple motion, and it's repeatable. I mean, it's, a, it's so easy to repeat it. It's perfect for a newer golfer. Okay. Now, I... Let's talk a little bit about this putter then. Well, we have, this is their new Ghost Spider Putter. Um, first thing I noticed was how good it looks next to the green grass. That bright white, uh, it just pops. I think, uh, you know, it looks like 3D, doesn't it? It does. And, you know, Jeff, I used to have the, or I tried the original Spider Putter that was black, and there was just too much chaos going on. I didn't really enjoy looking down at it. This is just, it looks clean. It looks simple. Well, you know, the other thing I like about it, when you set it down, it's just nice and flat. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel like, hey, you know, I know if it's flat and it's the right length, I'm in a good position. Um, what do you think about the weight of the putter? Well, it's interesting. I thought the weight felt good. I was kind of afraid it would feel kind of whippy or maybe like a baseball bat. But when you swing it back and through, it feels really solid. I liked it. And, you know, when I hit it, I, it had a really solid sound as well as a solid feel. It was really good feedback. Nice. Nice. I actually noticed that you could tell if you hit it off center. You noticed that sound, which I think is important. Now, something I inter that I thought was interesting is we brought two different putters out of it because they're really customizable as far as length is mm -hmm. concerned because we're all different heights. Right. We have a 41 and a 43. So, Amy, if someone's interested and they want to take, you may test drive one or actually get one in their bag, what should they do? They just need to click the link below and it'll t take you to where you can buy one. Seems pretty simple. Very simple. Click the link below. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Harrison. I'm Amy Anderson. For Swing Point Media. Hi everybody, it's the coach Rich Gilgallon with the coach's comments here on thegolfshoptv.com. Thanks for the great response we had last week on the uh, editorial that we gave regarding Tiger Woods' language. Now, you think a guy who takes on Tiger Woods, uh, it, it doesn't get any tougher than that. Well, today I'm going to take on another athlete, and his name is Jerry Rice, one of the greatest football players that's ever lived, the best receiver of all time. Jerry Rice uh, decided to sponsor a nationwide tour event. And because he was the sponsor of the Nationwide Tour event, he was in charge of giving out sponsor's exemptions. Who did he decide to give a sponsor's exemption to? Himself. Now, this is an issue that we deal with uh, in the golf business. We have great athletes, baseball players, pitchers especially, basketball players now who get supersized clubs, and football players, Everybody wants to be a golfer. That's great. 
we want uh, athletes to be involved in the game of golf, especially in these charity tournaments where celebrities come. Nothing is more exciting than, for, for example, getting the opportunity to play around with Jerry Rice. What a thrill that would be. But I have to say to my friends, these athletes, and particularly Jerry Rice, would you want a, a, a golfer to be blocking for you? As, you know, would you want uh, the walrus to be your quarterback? No, you wouldn't. I don't think they're too crazy about having you guys in these events. Now, it's only happened once or twice on the senior tour where an ex-athlete did any real good uh, in, a, in a tournament situation. And that was John Brody. I think he won a, a senior event. A great athlete and was a great golfer his whole life. The Hawk Allison got out of baseball and dabbled a little in the senior tour. But as Lee Trevino once said, if I haven't heard of you, you're not going to make it on the senior tour. Jerry Rice is a great athlete. He's a very good golfer. But the levels of, of quality in the game of golf, though the numbers might sound like much, the difference is very much. A two handicap, probably the best player in town gets into a, uh, a, a, a situation where he plays against a pro golfer, gets killed by that pro golfer. The difference between a scratch player, the best player in your club, maybe the best player in town, and the last guy on the money list is night and day. This is a very difficult game. It's tough to beat your buddies on Saturday, even if you're Jerry Rice. It's even tougher to qualify for a tour event. It's even tougher to play decent in a tour event. It's impossible to win a tour event. Then you get into the majors. It's impossible to win a major. So it's very difficult. So I say to my friends, the athletes, play your sport, enjoy the game, but don't give yourself a sponsor's exemption and shoot 88, 89 and embarrass yourself like that with guys that know how to play competitive golf. It's very difficult and not for the faint of heart. Welcome back to the golfshoptv.com. Jeff and Amy, how about behind us? What a view. We have the Chocolate Mountains and the Indo Indio Foothills. Spectacular, huh? Is this the place well, we or what? We don't have too many days like this, and the cloud coverage is just spectacular today. I know. If we could bottle a day like today and crack it open in July and August, we'd be billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, you know, we've had a lot of fun today. We talked about Bubba Watson, Annika Storenstam, uh, David Ledbetter. Michelle Wee. Man, what a show. And, uh, you know, we talked about the golf clubs. Your anchored. brother. My brother, oh. Kevin, the human rain delay. Thank God he was here today because it delayed the rain. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. I'm Jeff Harrison. I'm the coach, Rich Gilgallon. And I'm Amy Anderson. See you next time on thegolfshoptv.com.